Our question today is, how much money do you need to spend to have fun off-road? Now, I'm behind the wheel of the brand new 2020 Land Rover Defender, a nameplate that has been with us since the Stone Age, or the 50s anyway. Now, today we have a guest presenter, Tay, in the Suzuki Jimny, also a nameplate that has been around for quite a while. This has been around since the time of the Afros, the 70s. This is the fourth generation Jimny right over here, and it's been with us for two years from what I can see. And this is going to be David going up against Goliath. And I'm David's coach over here. And David, you got this. You got this done. So, for our shootout, we are going to be judging these cars on five separate categories. I think the first one should be practicality. Tay, in the back of this new Defender, I have 876 liters of space. It'll get a little bit less when I lift the third row of seats up. Well, they're jump seats. I have a built-in air compressor. I can lower the suspension. I can raise the suspension. So loading is not too much of an issue. I have power outlets. I have USB charging ports galore. Leg room for days in the back and up front. Yeah, we will get there. I think we should go and have a look, see what's in the back of the Jimny. I can fit a few goats in here. <laughs> if I emerge from the reeds over here, let me show you something the Jimny has in terms of practicality. Yes, the Defender's got all the nice little trinkets and everything, but guess what? This has a boot. No, 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 no. I know what you're going to say. It's tiny. It's tiny, but indulge in a little bit of lateral thinking. You know, maybe play a little bit of Tetris. And you can see, we can be creative with this. Pull the seats down. I mean, check this out. They sit flat. We can install a little bit of luggage here. I mean, it's got a 12 volt port over here. We even got screw holes for accessories, even if you want to plant them in. I mean, the back seats, you can fit your Nans, Boss and Dolls in there and that's pretty much where it starts. But think of the creativity. This is the Jimny, man. Oh, look, I'll, I'll, I'll give it that. It is very, very practical. Mm -hmm. But um, these are not just for loading things and people. These mm -hmm. are driver's cars and um, mm -hmm. I'll see you out on the 4x4 course. And I think we should. Come on, let's go. Come on. Let's sort this out like men. <laughs> hey, let me tell you a secret. Don't tell Lawrence this. I'm a novice at 4x4. Now, I said in the beginning that I'm going to be coaching David in this instance. But hey, David is going to be doing some coaching for me too. So let's see how a novice actually fares in the Jimny. And hey, we got it all simple here. We got the auto box. We're going to put that in drive. And we are in 4H at the moment. Really simple. Just... Slot it in from 2H and you're pretty much good to go. So we're going to be attacking this little trail over here. But you know what? You know what we need? We need fighting spirit. I made sure it says fighting spirit. I really did make sure. Someone's probably doing Google Translate on this. Hey, you do you. As far as drivability goes, this new Defender is a full monocoque unibody. It's not a ladder chassis like its predecessor, which makes this the strongest Land Rover that they have built to date. Now, it drives impeccably. It rides on a 291 millimeter air suspension that does 500 calculations per second to make sure that you have the optimum grip at all times. I have to admit, the visibility is rather poor. I struggle to see over the bonnet, can't really see out of the back window because of the spare wheel. Land Rover has thought of that, and um, you have full surround view cameras. There's cameras under all of it, so you get a full view of what's going on around you at all times. Now the Land Rover Defender does have a number of engine options, and this, the one that we have here, is the Big Daddy the three liter inline six. Now this vehicle produces 294 kilowatts, 550 Newton meters, and really it's underfoot, absolutely amazing. Now to make that drive that we were talking about earlier that much better, the Defender is of course equipped with Land Rover's terrain response system. And that just takes all of the guesswork out of driving off road. Activate the terrain response system and the vehicle pretty much drives itself. 
So you got to use your 4 by 4 accoutrement over here, which is hill descent, hill hold, you got brake LSD traction control, and of course, the all important low range. So, as we're going around here, we're in 4H, and the car's just taking it easy, taking it fine. It's just a nice little stroll in the parks here in Rainfield, and Jimny is confident. And I think this is the brilliance of the Jimny, is that it doesn't overcomplicate things. Not much like the Defender where it's a case of, human, I am going to teach you how to off-road. I know everything. So Jimny, you can do this. I got you. You got me. Okay, you've got more of me. So, feather the brakes slightly, more to the right, and just watch those wheels just articulate. And you feel it, and all these bonnet corners over here are actually helping me map out where the car is and where I should point it. And that, oh yeah, that departure and approach angle is helping me in this instance. So you've actually got the angled and optimized bumpers that help you with that. So at least you don't catch onto anything while you're doing your mad off-roading. And you know, after that little trail that we did over there, I think I get it. The Jimny prides itself on simplicity. And simplicity in the sense of, you don't need to make it overcomplicated in order to make it work. And with that simplicity also, you can make it cheaper, which is where the Jimny also prides itself. Well, as far as price is concerned, the Defender is not cheap. Starting price, base, no options, 1.2 million Rand, which makes this a very expensive weekend toy if all you're planning to do is do the school run and your grocery shopping. All right, let's talk about how this is going to hurt your wallet. Or if anything, your wallet will actually have pleasure from this. So. This is the top of the range model with a four speed automatic GLX trim, and you're gonna pay 356,000 Rand for this. Now the manual is even cheaper, and the basic basic spec, which still has all the accoutrement that you need for four x four, starts from 299,000 Rand. If that is not value for money, I don't know what is. Right, so let's talk a little bit about curbside appeal. Now, the styling of this, it's catching. You drive past in this, people think, hang on, what is that? Was that a G-Wagon? Was that a Jeep? Upon close inspection, I'm like, oh, it's a Suzuki. It's got very nice styling, I quite like it. Functional, yet stylish. That's the beauty of this. But I have to admit, for the short period of time that I've had this car, people have not left me alone. I've been stopped on the side of the road, people wanting to have a look at it, which means this car has got some serious curb appeal. There is a lot of want here. Admittedly, way outside of my price bracket, but I could park one of these in my garage. Well, as far as the fun factor is concerned, when you have a vehicle that is this capable, that has all of this technology and pretty much takes all of the thinking work out of off-roading, it really is, it, it is incredibly fun to drive this vehicle. I can't help wondering how much fun smaller would be. Check it out, check it out. Check it out. It did it. it <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> okay, okay, I dig this. I, I, I quite dig this. So the question was, do you need to have lots of money to have fun going off-road? Tay, what do you think? You know, you can have all the money and get yourself a Defender. Does everything, cracking really well, but just for a little bit less, it does everything you need and more. And most of all, puts a smile on your face, especially for a novice like me. Wait, I, I didn't tell you I was a novice, right? You've, you've never driven off-road before? No. Okay. So I would then say that the Jimny is a brilliant way to learn to drive one of these with no effort. 
I found the Defender to be quite easy to drive. I mean, this, this is heaps easy to do, but the thing is, this is intuitive. It's indicative of simple. It's indicative of fun. It's everything that I want out of off-road. And, and that is, it. you actually hit the nail right on the head there. Suzuki is fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, when Suzuki found out what we were going to be doing between these two vehicles, they stick it up their car a little. That was not us. I just want to mention that. Um, so yeah, fun, poking, yeah, th that's what the brand represents. And mm -hmm. I would have to say that, do you need to have lots of money? No, but it depends entirely on what you're going to do. Weekend Warrior jamming around in the dunes here amongst the trees. The Jimny for the price is perfect. 100%. If you yeah. are planning a major overlanding trip through the wilds of Africa, maybe the Dorian Gap or the Amazon jungle, the mm. Defender 110 with all of its accessories and packs and everything is probably going to be the one that you want to be able to do that trip. Relative comfort mm -hmm. and style. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. But I think for my little way of life, Suzuki does it good also. Uh, it'll be the 110 for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, David, let's go. All right, we're out of here. Let's go. Search Auto Trader.